Well, hi, good morning, and thank you so much for joining me in my shop here. It's July 15th. It's the middle of July. Oh my gosh. And uh, today's hot here, well, hot for here, not hot for some parts of the world, but going to get up close to 30 degrees and threats of uh, rain and thunderstorms and stuff like that. So here we go. Um, so yesterday, I, when I was working in my shop here, I did a, a whole section on the Q multiplier. And unfortunately, due to some video errors, I was unable to post any of that. So uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to talk briefly about the Q multiplier, what, what it is I've realized about, about it, about how it works, um, and, or doesn't work, or at least what I think, or how I think it's supposed to work. Uh, as usual, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt because uh, there's no guarantee that I know what I'm talking about or that I know that I know what I'm talking about. So we're going to look at the Q multiplier circuit, which on the schematic is, is up in this area. We're going to take a closer look at it. After that, I'm going to be doing some, uh, I'm going to go to the next step on the alignment process. We'll see how that goes. I don't even know what it is at the moment, but let's take a look at the Q multiplier on the... Uh, on the uh, schematic. So here's that part of the schematic I showed you right, right here. This is the Q multiplier circuit. You can see there's a uh, dashed line here. That's the uh, metal can. So a lot of this stuff is inside of a metal can. There's an adjustable coil there and here's the variable, uh, basically a variable resistor is really what this has turned into potentiometer that controls the uh, selectivity. So how do you manage to control selectivity with a potentiometer? That seems like an odd thing to me. Um, part of the circuit obviously is this triode, uh, half of the 12AX7. There is a warning in the manual that even if this tube should pass a tube tester test, it may have a sufficient leak in it that cannot be detected on a tube tester, but is still causing the radio to misbehave. So there's a warning in there about, about this tube. I, I don't think that's necessarily the problem here. I don't know that there even is a problem here, to be honest with you. So uh, the way this works, and I could be wrong in this, but I believe it's basically controlled positive feedback. And so this is the positive feedback control, if you like, this whole circuit here. Uh, uh, feedback from where? So if we follow this line, we come back here, we end up at the screen of the next tube. So the screen is like a mini plate. Uh, it will carry signal information. Uh, also carry a lot of DC voltage here uh, to drive the tube. So that's coming up, going through a 50k resistor and blocked here from getting onto the grid. Boy, if that's leaky, and then uh, the DC go up through this coil and to the plate. So you get the plate feed, uh, DC plate feed from there. Um, are you actually getting a bit of signal also? It could be, I'm not sure. Uh, it means right on the plate up to this point. This would be like a plate resistor here for this tube, I, I, I guess. I'm not too sure what to say about that. Now, if we look at the, and, and what I mean by that is, I, is it really, is it receiving a signal into here? I'm not sure. Now, if we look at the output side of this tube, so we follow the plate circuit, assuming the plate is the output side of things, we come back to this plate resistor here, and we can see connection coming out to the switch through a capacitor up to the input side of this tube. So, so we have an output coming here and we have an input coming there and this stuff in between with an amplifier. So I'm, I'm guessing what's happening generally in this circuit is you're amplifying the, the signal that's coming from here or controlling the amplification of the signal that's coming from here and applying it back to the input. It's a positive feedback arrangement, which means eventually it's it's unstable. Uh, if you send too much back, you'll just get a, a feedback 
uh, occurring. In this radio, if you do that, if you turn this adjustment to the point where there's too much feedback, then the radio goes silent. And uh, no doubt it has to do with, with what's happening in this, in this circuit here. Um, and that wasn't terribly helpful. So that's the situation with it. It's basically a controlled feedback. Turns out if you fool with this, what is basically a cathode resistor here, and change the mu of the tube, you change the bandwidth somehow. I don't know exactly how, but the bandwidth will get uh, narrower as you do, I don't know which way you go with this, but one way or the other, it gets narrower. And then this adjustment, which is brought out, this is brought out onto the front panel. Oh, uh, okay, I see where they meant, no, it's, yeah, it is brought out onto the front panel and this box is right tight to the front panel here. So this is protruding through this uh, metal box and out the front panel. Now you adjust this to um, uh, uh, ch change uh, <laughs> change the frequency of this. Uh, again, how, how that how exactly that does that? I don't know. I don't know, but it seems to. So that, that's roughly how this circuit works. That's what I figured out yesterday, staring at it for so long. And uh, if I got it right, I don't know. Is it going to help me figure out if it's working? Well, here's the thing. After doing the analysis of the circuit and coming up with how it worked in that, I then laid out the radio for a test, performed the test on here. The test was just hooking it up to an antenna and just listening to a station. And when I turned these controls on, it seemed to work kind of the way I expected. So that's a little surprising to me. Uh, earlier, I was quite convinced that this was not working right. Now I'm thinking, yeah, you know, it does seem to be working right. Just listening to the sound and, and the, the way it uh, affects the uh, signal. So I'm leaving all this alone. I don't know what to do about it yet. I'm not sure I understand how the circuit works or I can troubleshoot it properly or even determine if it's really working properly, other than operate it and listen to it. So, okay, but I did yesterday straighten out the BFO. If you've watched the video, you know that. So let's look at what the next stage is in the alignment process. The next stage. I'm going to be down here. Nope, 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 nope. We're at the end here. With the BFO, is that the instant that's like? So this is the BFO adjustment that I did. And meter zero adjust is what's next on the list here. With the manual AV switch on AVC, the sensitivity control at maximum. With grid pin one of the V5 amplifier tube grounded. And with no signal input, Adjust the meter zero adjust pot at the end at the rear of the chassis for a reading of zero on the S meter. So you gotta have the AVC switch on AVC for the meter to work. Sensitivity control at maximum. Grid pin one, the V5. Grounded. Okay. That's what we're gonna have to do here. Okay we're ready for this. So I've used a clip lead here to stick a short on pin 1 of V5 and we're going to need to have this. We don't want to do it with the radio on an angle because the weight of the pointer will will throw it off. Now without it operating at all we should probably set the zero here. Uh, I didn't read anything in the instructions about that. That's turning the whole spring mechanism in there to so get it correct. Now, the control for adjustment is on the back here. 
this guy here. It's out where anybody, including me, would turn it, at a, at, you know, on a whim, which is probably how these things get out of whack. And I think we're all set to go. I have no antenna connection at all to the radio. Here we go. And maybe I, I should give this a couple minutes to warm up. So I'm going to, uh, hey, coffee break time. Yeah. Okay, I think we're ready for this pretty simple adjustment. So uh, sensitivity is all the way up. AVC is switched on. And uh, no signal. Let's adjust. Exciting moment here. There. There we go. <laughs> huh. That's about the easiest uh, adjustment I think I've ever done on a radio. Okay, what's next on the list here? Okay, I think it's wise to read through this entire thing. I already have twice, so I'm going to read through it again, this time with you. So, uh, the slugs and trimmers having been factory adjusted should require a minimum amount of adjustment for any realignment. Okay. All RF and oscillator slug adjustments are made from the top of the shield cans. So I think what they're saying here is you don't need to have your radio turned upside down at any point during this affair. Everything's from the top. Connect the unmodulated signal generator output cable to the antenna and ground terminals of the receiver with the A terminal adjacent to the G terminal jumped together. Okay, that's fine. Set the controls the same as for the IF alignment above. Adjust the sensitivity control as required to obtain a sufficient voltmeter reading and to prevent overloading. Okay. The oscillator adjustment is made first. The RF is adjusted next to obtain maximum amplitude. The antenna slugs are adjusted last. A certain amount of interaction will occur between the oscillator and RF adjustments, particularly on the higher frequency bands. This is a this is quite a powerful statement here. What, what what's being said here? This is a hidden truth in a lot of radios, I think. Final adjustment should be accomplished by combined or alternate adjustment of the oscillator and the RF for maximum amplitude. So there's a lesson in here uh, that I have learned the hard way with another radio. We had another radio in here and you could you could adjust the oscillator, local oscillator to where you want it but then when you perform the RF adjustment it would affect the oscillator and a, a lot. And I had a heck of a time first realizing what was happening and secondly dealing with it. So how can you possibly deal with this? You, you make, you, you turn one control and another adjustment is going off. Well, you'd have to turn those two controls simultaneously, carefully, to try to get them both to their mutual maximum point. I think that's what he said here. Accomplished by combined adjustment of the oscillator and the RF, or alternate adjustment of the oscillator and RF. This is a more clever way of saying rock the tuning control. You see a lot of radios in the alignment instructions they will say during this adjustment uh, rock the tuning control. And I've had trouble with that explanation. It has not, never been terribly clear to me. But I've, I've sort of got in my head what this guy is saying now. I, I sort of view it this way, uh, a little bit of a deeper view of what you're doing with these controls. One is if you're turning both of them at the same time, you're doing a combined adjustment of the oscillator and RF. And if you're doing one and then the other and then back to the one and then the other and trying different settings in here and there, then you're doing the alternate adjustment. So I think the word rock has been replaced with this phrase and uh, this really clarifies why you might need to rock 
uh, using the term rock, or why you might need to turn both adjustments at the same time, because there's a mutual effect between them. Okay. Yeah, sound a little excited, eh? <laughs> yeah, I've only been doing this all my life, and, you know, basic things still getting clarified. Uh, kind of, yeah, this says something about me, I guess. Note. The trimmer adjustments, if required, should be the final adjustment for each band. Uh, trimmer. So a trimmer, often what they when they say trimmer, they mean a capacitor adjustment as opposed to a slug adjustment. I think that's what they're saying here. It'll be the final adjustment. See figure eight for location of trimmers. There is no RF amplifier adjustment for the uh, broadcast band. Okay, so don't go looking for that. Note that the oscillator frequency in the HQ100 is always on the high side of the signal frequency. Yeah. I stumbled on this note quite early on here. I was quite happy to find it because there is the odd radio where they don't tell you uh, clearly where the local oscillator is relative to the uh, target signal you're going after. And uh, when, when they don't tell you that, but they just give you the instructions for doing the alignment, sometimes it's hard to figure out what it is there. They're actually, you know, whether the uh, local oscillator should be above or below. And, you, and on the high frequency bands, you can get it wrong quite easily. Okay. Great, thank you very much, Mr. Engineer. It will be necessary to repeat low and high end alignment adjustments of each band since the adjustments are interdependent. <coughs> Excuse me. Process should be repeated until maximum amplitude is obtained at both alignment frequencies of each band. Note, receiver should be warmed up at least half an hour before the final oscillator frequency adjustments are made. So the rate has been on almost half an hour now, sitting here. Well, that's the instructions. Okay, well, we're going to work our way through these things next, but I'm going to give the radio a little more time and go visit my coffee cup again. Just before we get going, one of the notes was that all uh, oscillator adjustments are made from the top. And this is looking in at the top of the, uh, this is looking at the bottom of the radio. And what are these RF adjustments? They've listed them here in the bottom. So what do they mean they're all made from the top? So if we go here, if you look carefully enough, you realize these are the same adjustments here, sticking out the top. They stick out the top and the bottom. Here they are here, 41030, 41030. So I, I believe that's what's going on here. They stick out the top and the bottom, and so they're telling you, so you won't get confused, that you're just adjusting these from the top. I believe. Okay. Let's see where we are now. <laughs> okay, maybe I have to undo what I just said because what it actually says, all RF and oscillator slug adjustments are made from the top of the shield cans. Shield cans. Okay, well, you know, these are the shield cans here. There's no shield cans related to these adjustments. So, you know, confusion reigns. <laughs> Let's just carry on. You know, like if you don't understand something, at, at the very least, you can realize you need to understand something and keep keep going forward until you crash right into uh, whatever it is, which I'm sure I'm going to crash into pretty quick. So what are we doing here? Connect the unmodulated signal generator. I haven't done that. Set the controls the same. I haven't done that. Okay, so I'm going to do those things. Uh, do those things. Hear a bit of a roar in the background it's just the air conditioner running in my house so you know there's no table of instructions which is kind of uh, counter to what you usually find in well done manuals usually they have a nice table and they just you know, run it down and do the thing <laughs> not here this is it this is it this is the instruction here earlier on it said uh, over here you do the oscillator first then the rf then you do the antenna that's that's a normal way of doing it so in this case, I, it doesn't say which band to do first, so I, I guess they're all completely independent. You can do them any way you want. Um, so I'm going to start on the uh, broadcast band, and maybe, maybe that's all I'm going to get through today. Broadcast band, so it looks like, 
these four adjustments top slug adjust at 0.6 at 600 kilocycles bottom slug adjust at 1.65 what's this 1.5 out here top slug adjust at 4 megacycles bottom slug adjust at 10 There's a 10 here. See, these are all captured in this uh, uh, oscillator adjustment section. But, but these ones over here are RF adjustments in these cans. But they made a little bit of a mistake here and they sort of written these two items above this title as if they're oscillator adjustments when they really aren't. The oscillator adjustments are just these going across the bottom. Oh my! <laughs> it's a puzzle at every turn. It's a puzzle at every turn in these things. Well I guess we could you know tune the radio, like tune, tune the station in and then you know fool around with the slug here and see if it changes the oscillator. Top slug adjust at 0.6, bottom slug at... Meanwhile there's a 0.5 here. I wonder if there's another diagram that uh, uh, indicates what, what, these, what these are. I, I'm going to look through the manual some more. Maybe I overlook something. In an effort to get unconfused, I'm getting more confused. So here's the top diagram we were just looking at, and the uh, slug adjustments, which I believe are the oscillator adjustments, are here. A little hard to see. Not in cans. They're not in cans. These are just uh, uh, you know thread threaded slug adjusters. <laughs> Don't know what else to call them. Okay, that's great. So here they are on top. Here they are underneath. No, wait, wait a minute. That's not them. RF 10. All adjustments are done from the top. Wait a minute. What's going on here? All oscillator adjustments are done from the top. So this is a separate set of adjustments. There's only three of them. Whereas on the top, there's four. I thought these were the same adjustments just poking through top and bottom, but they're not because the other adjustments are somewhere in the middle of the chassis. These ones are right at the front. Right at the front. So they're up, they're up in this area. Well, okay. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't done anything here except get myself really unnerved. So if we want to pick a band and do this thing, Oh, remember it said there's no RF adjustment for the broadcast band. What, what did it say about that? What did it say about that? There is no RF amplifier adjustment for the uh, broadcast band. Okay, so, so is there an, an, an RF amplifier adjustment? That's probably what these are none for the broadcast band underneath here. So they didn't use any extra words here to say what it is. Just, just this title down here. Top slug adjust that. Bottom slug adjust that. Top, bottom, well, I, you know, I'm going to have to go with the idea that, uh, that these two things are not adjustments. Especially top and bottom doesn't make sense with these here. With, with, with these here, top, bottom. Slug adjust. Ahead. Well, again, it doesn't tell me what to do first, second, or third here. Except to say do oscillator first, RF next. So let, let's fool with these guys. Okay, so I only have to fool with one because I'm only on one band. 
so it's the one to the left and we are adjusting the accuracy if I remember right this radio is really accurate anyway so what am I really adjusting here oh my gosh that's the guy we'll go after that guy at 1.5 okay we're gonna go after that guy at 1.5 is that so way to the left here okay now let me get the right kind of tool for that to do I need to set this to 1500 There we are. 1500. Okay, I guess we need to set this guy to 1500 also. Okay, what do we hear? Okay, turning up the radio. We hear a dirty volume control. Yeah, did I hook it up? I did not hook up the antenna. I did not hook up the antenna. So this is not going to work till I do that. the antenna I really meant the uh, signal generator you can see the clip lead hanging out the back here is bringing out the AVC voltage so I can put it on the meter oh my god what's driving me nuts here is, is I have this itchy skin problem <laughs> right here and once I start scratching oh my gosh I can't stop this is terrible um, Okay, so are we hearing this? Pay attention to what you're doing, gentlemen. I'm not hearing anything. Of course, I'm not on 15. 15 here, but not there. Not there. Okay, hand on the volume control. And modulation, please. Oh my gosh, what's going on? What? What's happening? What happened? What happened here? Um... Why would we not hear anything here? A little more sens sensitivity. Signal level's pretty good here. Let me check the calibration on it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Lots of, lots of, lots coming out. Am I, did I not? I did hook it up. What am I talking about? Definitely on the right band here. Hello. Hello, hello. Oh my gosh. It's nothing. What are you doing here? What are you doing that's not working out here? You're doing something dumb somewhere along the line here. Something dumb is happening. Uh, unless the radio is really weak. How could it be that weak? Now we're hitting it with basically the strongest signal you'd ever get off an antenna. I'm definitely tuned to 15. I'm definitely set on the right band here. The sensitivity is up. In fact, it's at max now. Uh, 
what, what's going on here that I not, I'm not realizing. Uh, radio's got 113 volts on it. Uh, man, I better go have some coffee at this point. <laughs> um, why are you not working, radio? I, I, I got no idea why. Let's put it on uh, ABC here. Stupid thing am I doing? What 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 crazy things going on here? Fifteen. This radio just stopped. And pump the volume. Pump the volume. There's a signal there. It's not particularly strong. It's definitely a signal there. It seems to be very strong for what's going on. My signal generator just gave out on me. I can't, can't, can't believe that. Modulation. 30%. Oh my gosh, what's happening? Oh, smokes, what has happened here? Uh... I don't get it. Okay, so we're going to switch here to a regular antenna. Did, did, I, what did I do? Did I do something? You know, I do have this meter connected. Um, did I make a mistake in how I connected that? I left a short in there. I left a short in there. <laughs> yeah, man. You left a short in there to do the meter adjustment. Okay, let's remove the short. Um, okay. <laughs> I'll be okay. Yeah, turn it off for this just because. What a knucklehead. Remove the short. Throw the short over there. Check this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know what? The power transformer gets very hot in this radio. How hot is it? It's not. It's not so. It's not so hot. I can put my hand on it. Keep my hand on it. So it's about forty right now. If it gets up to fifty, I can't keep my hand on on something like that. Okay. I think I'm gonna turn this back on and know that it's working and then I'm going to go have a coffee while it warms itself back up properly. <sighs> okay, once again, are we still tuned to 15? What did I know? I know it's right on 15, right on the line. That sounds more like it. I don't have anything hooked up now to the antenna for crying out loud. <laughs> Okay, I will be okay. Turn this down, turn this up. 15. Yeah, look at this. Do a little, play a little game here called make that meter go all the way up. Or as high as you can get it. I'm tuning the signal generator to do that. So that's the top. That's the number. What is there to adjust in this radio? Nothing. So there, there, there's nothing to adjust. Okay. Well, that's good. That's fair enough. 
Now, next thing after the uh, was oscillator, RF, and then antenna. So, can you see this page here? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, now, one of these here. Top slug adjust at, and then the antennas are antenna right at the back. So, we're doing these next. So we're doing this next, this next, this next, top slug, 0.6. Why, why would he even do this? Well, let, let, let's, go, let's go see how accurate it is. And how with that knob, you won't. It's completely accurate. There's just not, nothing here to do. So 0.6. Okay, we're tuned right on 600 here. This is still on the line. Take this down to 600. I know what happens. Okay, we're, we're going to play the meter game again. I'm adjusting the oscillator. The maximum the curves right there. What do we get for a reading? We get 600. It's nothing to adjust. Can't make that any better. And then you go up to the top. 1.65, 1.65, right at the top. How can you do 1.65? There's no, that's off the scale. Top slug at 0.6, bottom slug at 1.65. But you don't know where 1.65 is. Let's check it at 1.6. I mean, I guess you could estimate where you're supposed to turn this to, but you know, it seems kind of weird. 1.6. Let's give it a go. 1.6. Okay, let's play the game. Let's play the meter game. So this keeps my eye off the. Uh, numbers so I don't cheat. There we are. That's the top. What do you get? You can't get much closer than that. I mean that that's a tuning error on the on the on the radio here. On the, so right on the money. Holy smokes. This this radio this radio <laughs> it's not giving me much room to improve anything. Next will be the next band. I'm scratching away on my elbow here. Yeah, I gotta deal with that. I got some stuff to put on it to stop the itch. And drink some coffee and we'll do the next band. Okay, one more adjustment here for this band and that's the antenna adjustment, which according to this chart would be done Uh, look, uh, this is 1.2 megacycles. This is 1.65 megacycles. 10. 4. Ten. <laughs> you know, these instructions are really weak at this point. Um, they didn't say what band. 10 megacycles appears in two bands. Got the 4 to 10 and the 10 to 30. 10 megacycles appears in two bands. So which one is it? The other thing they don't do is all through here, like all through, I'm complaining now. They write, you know, T8, T7, looks like T6 or something like that. And that, that's helpful. You could take that T number and you could relate it back to, you know, the, no you can't because they don't quote the T number on any diagram. So how are you going to know which one of these is T what? Well, maybe by reading these things. But how can you know? There's, there's two tens. 6.5 doesn't appear on the broadcast band. Yet 6.5 was quoted down here. Son of a gun. I, I wonder if you know, they're not saying what band you're working on here. They're just giving numbers. Like 
bottom slug adjust at 1.65 megacycles. Well, the place you find 1.65 megacycles is actually on, on the next band up here, not on the uh, broadcast band. Wow, they really think you're going to think. <laughs> the, the engineer who wrote this, the guys who developed this, they thought, well, the people reading this are going to think it through. Don't worry. Wow, holy smokes. You can make a ton of mistakes here. You can make a ton of mistakes here. Bottom slug adjust for 1.65. Bottom slug adjust at 1.65. So you're, you're doing these two slugs? Yeah, RF. Well, then this becomes an oscillator adjustment. What the heck is going on? <laughs> oh my gosh. Am I easy to confuse? Is that, is that what it is? That's the real problem. Is that it doesn't take much to get me all confused here. Forget all that. Let's go back and just deal with this again. So four can't be four. 1.2 could be 1.2. 1.65 shouldn't be that. Can't be 10. Got to be this. Got to be that. Got to be the back corner. Now, the next thing is adjusting the antenna adjustment. Is, it, is Are you not kind of adjusting it for the antenna you're using? It's not just. It's not just out there. Uh, so I have a signal generator connected here. Adjust slug at 1.2 with antenna capacitor near minimum capacity. With antenna capacitor near minimum. They must mean the, uh, the uh, antenna trimmer, which I cannot see without looking underneath the radio. Oh, okay, let's read that again. Adjust the slug at 1.2 megacycles with antenna capacitor near minimum capacity. And I have to see it. I don't know where the minimum is. Maybe I can train myself. Cal calibrate this front dial here. Okay, flip the radio again. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Antenna trimmer near minimum. Well, that's exactly where it was. Okay, so if that's the minimum, the maximum's over here. So, maximum, minimum. Yep. Okay, that's worth knowing. I guess this is half. <laughs> half is half, yeah. Okay, that's at the minimum. And one point two. One point two is kind of in the middle. One point two. Okay. Oh, whoa. How about one point two here? Okay, I'm playing the meter game on my own over here. There's the meter game. So it's just a touch off, but you know what? That's. Let's do this. Put it where it should be. Maximize using the radio tuning. And then I look at it and I say, it's a fraction off, 1.2. It's, a, it's a, a needle width or a uh, pointer width, so that's that's good. Now what are we doing here? We're adjusting the uh, antenna. Doing it with a signal generator. Oh, we'll make sure I get the top and bottom slug thing correct. Adjust slug. Just says slug. I guess there's only one slug in these. I think it said that in the book. So there's just a just one slug. Okay, let's 
my slug guy here. Okay, we're in. Now watching the meter. This slug is really tough to turn. Now, see it going up. there. Let's go back. That would be the adjustment. Hey, I adjusted something. Now we're going to hook up the antenna that I normally use on the radio. We'll take it off the signal generator and put it on the antenna, which I'm pretty sure is not switched on here. Tune in a station. Right there, right? Tuning in very carefully. Okay. Now we're going to try that slug again and see if it's any different. Going in the correct slug thing. Just waiting for it to. There we are. We're in now. You're watching. You're watching this meter. You can watch this one too. You can watch them both. Going up, 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 down. So you know, I think that proves. What you have connected to the radio is all about making that adjustment. In other words, that's a stupid way of putting it. The smarter way would be to make that last adjustment with the real antenna on it. That's more or less what I've done, even though I'm going to have this in another location in my house, and that'll remove about 30 feet of uh, 75 ohm feed line. Uh, it's the same antenna in the end. And I guess you could you could set this up in your listening spot and then make those adjustments. Although this particular radio, you cannot access it, you know, without taking the whole cabinet off. So big hassle, big hassle there. There we go. Broadcast band done. You know, what? I'm going to call it quits there. Uh, that was enough of a slug fest right there. Um, tomorrow we'll carry on. Probably do the three uh, remaining bands. And uh, once again, wow, this radio is in, in really good shape. And I'm guessing the the apparent improvement in the operation of of the uh, of the uh, Q multiplier that I noticed yesterday is really coming from aligning the radio properly, adjusting it and aligning it properly. Although I'm not adjusting much. <laughs> okay. Be before I make even less sense, I will say goodbye and uh, see you tomorrow. Have a great day.